human lifespan is thought to be programmed to have a maximum of about 120 years. Our problem hasn't been adding years to life. Our problem has been adding healthy years to life. I've been studying aging for 20 years now, trying to understand what are the reasons we grow old and how can we slow it down. And to use that technology, that know-how, to treat diseases of aging. Our goal is to maximize the quality of life and to allow as many people as possible to live to a ripe old age and remain healthy for the majority of their life. It's really staying healthy through life that is the major challenge that we have, both medically and economically and like everything else. Mitochondrial decline is at the root of most diseases of aging and that includes cancer and heart disease, diabetes and Alzheimer's. And those are just the four main ones. If we can correct the defects that are associated with aging, we're going to have an impact not on one disease, but in many diseases at a time. What we represent is a completely new therapeutic class. With the mitochondrial peptides developed at COBAR, these are new mechanisms of action. What excites me about the whole age uh, related disease area is that age-related diseases affect many, many people and it's a chance to maybe impact the lives of millions of people that are either suffering from an age-related disease or they are caring for someone who's dealing with an age-related disease. Once we discovered the first mitochondrial peptide, the potential of the mitochondria to harbor additional great discoveries that will improve human health has been so compelling that I personally dropped all the other research directions that I was involved in. Up until recently, we thought that there were only 13 boring genes in the mitochondrial genome that just made proteins for energy. But now we know, thanks to the discovery of Barzillai and Cohen, that the mitochondrial genome contains dozens of these genes that were once hidden for decades. And these genes code for very small peptides, what we call mitochondrial peptides, and they can affect the metabolic processes in the body. Uh, they can communicate between cells and within cells. The results that we have observed include very dramatic restoration of cellular function, improvements in blood sugar, normalization of the diabetic state, delays of deterioration of cognitive function. But what's exciting about COBAR is that if we can make a drug that ramps up, improves mitochondrial function, we could use it initially to treat one disease, let's say type 2 diabetes, but that same drug could be used to prevent and treat Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, and even cancer. So this could be very big once the drugs reach the market. We have a pipeline that can address each one of those diseases or maybe even its combination. We're not a one product company. And that's the beauty of a technology-based company. I think mitochondria-based therapeutics offer great potential as treatments for these age-related diseases and ultimately to extend healthy lifespan. These are huge market opportunities to address diabetes, obesity, cancer. The quality of a team is probably the most important aspect of a biotech. And if you look at the caliber and experience of our founders, and our science team, COBAR has an A plus team. There are theoretically dozens and dozens additional peptides that could prove to have important biological functions and therapeutic potential. A few years ago, Fortune magazine estimated that such a drug could be worth $25 billion per year. That's big for science, it's big for biology, and it's big for the company.